the proposals in Parte will further strengthen the sankalp of nation first, doubling farmers' income, strong infrastructure, healthy India, good governance, opportunities for youth, education for all, women empowerment, and inclusive development, among others. Additionally, also on the path to fast implementation are the 13 promises we had made in the budget of 2015-16, which were to materialize during the Amrit Mahotsab of 2022 on the 75th year of our independence. They too resonate with the vision of Atmanir Bharta. The budget proposals for 21-22 rest on six pillars, health and well-being, physical and financial capital and infrastructure, inclusive development for aspirational India, reinvigorating human capital, innovation and R&D, and a sixth minimum government and maximum governance. I now move to talking about the first pillar, health and well-being. Even at the outset, I would like to say that the investment on health infrastructure in this budget has increased substantially. Progressively, as institutions absorb more, we shall commit more. Taking a holistic approach to health, we focus on strengthening three areas, preventive, curative, and well-being. Health systems. A new, new centrally sponsored scheme, PM Atmanirbhar Swast Bharat Yojana, will be launched with an outlay of about 64,180 crores over six years. This will develop capacities of primary, secondary, and tertiary care health systems, strengthen existing national institutions, and create new institutions to cater to detection and cure of new and emerging diseases. This will be in addition to the National Health Mission. The main interventions under the scheme are support for over 17,000 rural and 11,000 urban health and wellness centers, setting up integrated public health labs in all districts, and, uh, th and 3,382 block public health units in 11 states, establishing criti critical care ho hospital blocks in 602 districts and 12 central institutions. Strengthening of National Center for Disease Control, its five regional branches, and 20 metropolitan health surveillance units. Expansion of the integrated health information portal to all states and UTs to connect all public health labs. Operationalization of 17 new public health units and strengthening of 33 existing public health units at points of entry, that is, at 32 airports, 11 seaports, and seven land crossings. Setting up of 15 health emergency operation centers and two mobile hospitals. And setting up of a national institution for One Health, a regional research platform for WHO, World Health Organization, Southeast Asia region office, nine biosafety level three laboratories, and four regional national institutes for virology. Nutrition. To strengthen nutritional content, delivery, outreach, and outcome, we will merge the supplementary nutrition program and the portion abhiyan and launch the Mission Portion 2.0. We shall adopt an intensified strategy to improve nutritional outcomes across 112 aspirational districts. Universal coverage of water supply. The World Health Organization has repeatedly stressed the importance of clean water, sanitation, and clean environment as a prerequisite to achieving universal health. 
the Jal Jeevan Mission Urban will be launched. It aims at universal water supply in all 4,378 urban local bodies with 2.86 crores household tap connections as well as liquid waste management in 500 Amrit cities. It will be implemented over five years with an outlay of 2,87,000 crores. Swachh Bharat and Swast Bharat. For further Swachhata of urban India, we in intend to focus on complete fecal sludge management and wastewater treatment, source segregation of garbage, reduction in single-use plastic, reduction in air pollution by effectively managing waste from construction and demolition activities, and bioremediation of all legacy dump sites. The Urban Swachh Bharat Mission 2.0 will be implemented with a total financial allocation of 1,41,678 crores over a period of five years from 2021. Clean air. To tackle the burgeoning problem of air pollution, I propose to provide an amount of 2,217 crores of rupees for 42 urban centers with a million plus population in this budget. Scrapping policy. We are separately announcing, Honorable Speaker, a voluntary vehicle scrapping policy to face out old and unfit vehicles. This will help in encouraging fuel efficient, environment friendly vehicles, thereby reducing vehicular pollution and oil import bills. Vehicle, vehicles would undergo fitness tests in automated fitness centers after 20 years in case of personal vehicles and after 15 years in case of commercial vehicles. Details of the scheme will be separately shared by the ministry. Vaccines. The pneumococcal vaccine, a made in India product, is presently limited to only five states. It will be rolled out across the country. This will avert more than 50,000 child deaths annually. Honorable Speaker, I have provided 35,000 crores of rupees for COVID-19 vaccine in this year, 21-22. So the budget outlay for health and well-being is 2,23,846 crores in this BE 21-22 as against the BE of only 94,452 crores, and it marks an increase of 137 percentage. The details of the same are at Annexure 1 of the speech. We now move to the second pillar, physical and financial capital and infrastructure. Atmanirbhar Bharat production-linked incentive schemes are things which I would like to pay place and emphasis. For a $5 trillion economy, our manufacturing sector has to grow in double digits on a sustained basis. Our manufacturing companies need to become an integral part of global supply chains, possess core competence and cutting edge technology. To achieve all of the above, PLI schemes to create manufacturing global champions for an Atmanirbhar Bharat have been announced for 13 sectors. For this, the government has committed nearly 1.97 lakh crores over five years starting this financial year. This initiative will help bring scale and size in key sectors, create and nurture global champions, and provide jobs to our youth. Textiles. To enable the textile industry to become globally competitive, attract large investments, and boost employment generation, a scheme of mega investment textile spark 
will be launched in addition to the PLI schemes. This will create world-class infrastructure with plug-and-play facilities to enable create global champions in exports. Seven textile parks will be established over three years. Infrastructure. The National Infrastructure Pipeline, which I announced in December 2019, is the first of its kind. Whole of government exercise ever undertaken by Government of India. The NIP was launched with 6,835 projects. The project pipeline has now expanded to 7,400 projects. Around 217 projects worth rupees 1.10 lakh crores under some key infrastructure ministries have been completed. The NIP is a specific target which this government is committed to achieving over the coming years. It will require major increase in funding from both the government and the financial sector. Five operational roads with an estimated enterprise value of 5,000 crores of rupees are being transferred to the NHAI in WIT. Similarly, transmission assets of value 7,000 crores will be transferred to the PGCIL in WIT. Railways will monetize dedicated freight corridor assets for operations and maintenance after commissioning. Sharp increase in capital budget. In the BE 2020-21, we had provided for 4.12 lakh crores for capital expenditure. It was our effort that in spite of resource crunch, we should spend more on capital and we are likely to end this year at around 4.39 lakh crores, which I have provided in the RE of 2020-2021. For 21-22, I propose a sharp increase in capital expenditure and thus have provided 5.54 lakh crores, which is 34.5% more than the BE of 2020-2021. Of this, I have kept a sum of more than 44,000 crores in the budget head of the Department of Economic Affairs to be provided for projects, programs, or departments that show good progress in capital expenditure and are in need of further funds. Over and above this expenditure, we would also be providing more than 2 lakh crores to states and autonomous bodies for their capital expenditure. Roads and highways infrastructure. More than 13,000 kilometer length of roads at a cost of 3.3 lakh crores has already been awarded under the 5.3 5 lakh crores Bharat Mala Pariyojana project, of which 3,800 kilometers have been constructed. By March 2022, we would be awarding another 8,500 kilometers and complete an additional 11,000 kilometers of national highway corridors. To further augment road infrastructure, more economic corridors are also being planned. Some are 3,500 kilometer of national highway works in the state of Tamil Nadu at an investment of 1.03 lakh crores. These include, these include Madurai Kollam Corridor, Chittur Tachur Corridor, and construction will start next year. Second, 1,100 kilometer of national highway works in the state of Kerala at an investment of 65,000 crores, including, including 600 kilometer section of Mumbai Kanyakumari corridor in Kerala. 
third, 675 kilometer of highway works in the state of West Bengal at a cost of at a cost of 25,000 crores, including up upgradation of existing road Kolkata Siliguri. Highway works of around 19,000 crores are currently in progress in the state of Assam. Further works of more than 34,000 crores covering more than 1,300 kilometers of national highways will be undertaken in the state in the coming three years. I am also providing an enhanced outlay of 1 lakh 18,101 lakh crores, 1 lakh 18,101 crores for Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, of which 1 lakh 8,230 crores is for capital, the highest ever provided. <laughs> Railway infrastructure. Honorable Speaker, sir, Indian Railways have prepared a National Rail Plan for India 2030. The plan is to create a future-ready railway system by 2030, bringing down the logistic costs for, a, for an industry is at the core of a strategy to enable make in India. It is expected that Western dedicated freight corridor and Eastern dedicated freight corridor will be commissioned by June 2022. The following additional initiatives are also proposed. The Sonnagar Gomo sections, 263 kilometers of Eastern dedicated freight corridor will be taken up in PPP mode in this year itself. Gomo Dankuni section of 274.3 kilometers will be also taken up short, shortly in short success, succession. We will undertake future dedicated freight corridor projects, namely East Coast Corridor from Karakpur to Vijayawada, East West Corridor from Busaval to Karakpur to Dankuni, and North South Corridor from Itarsi to Vijayawada. Detailed project reports will be undertaken in the first phase. Broad gauge route kilometers, RKM as they refer to, Electrified is expected to reach 46,000 kilometers, 46,000 RKMs. That is 72% by end of 2021 from 41,548 RKMs on 1st October 2020. 100% electrification of broad gauge routes will be completed by December 2023. For passenger convenience and safety, the following measures are being proposed. We will introduce the aesthetically designed Vista Dome LHB coach on tourist routes to give better travel experience to passengers. The safety measures undertaken in the past few years have borne results. To further strengthen this effort, high density network and highly utilized network routes of Indian railways will be provided with an indigenously developed automatic train protection system that eliminates train collusion due to human error. I am providing a record sum of 1,10,055 crores for railways, which, of which 1,7,100 crores is for capital expenditure only. Urban infrastructure. We will work towards raising the share of public transport in urban areas through expansion of metro rail networks and augmentation of city bus services. A new scheme will be launched at a cost of 18,000 crores to support augmentation of public bus transport services. The scheme will facilitate deployment of innovative PPP models 
to enable private sector players to finance, to acquire, to operate, and to maintain over 20,000 buses. The scheme will boost the automobile sector, provide Philip to economic growth, create employment opportunities for our youth, and enhance ease of mobility for urban residents. A total of 702 kilometers of conventional metro is operational and another 1,016 kilometers of metro and RRTS is under construction in 27 cities. Two new technologies, that is Metro Light and Metro Neo, will be deployed to provide metro rail systems at much lesser cost with same experience, convenience, and safety in tier two cities and peripheral areas of tier one cities also. Central counterpart funding will be provided to Kochi Metro Railway Phase 2 of 11.5 kilometer at a cost of 1,957.05 crores. Chennai Metro Railway Phase 2 of 118.9 kilometers at a cost of 63,246 crores. Bengaluru Metro Railway Project Phase 2A and 2B of 58.19 kilometers at a cost of 14,788 crores. Nagpur Metro Rail Project Phase 2 and Nashik Metro at a cost of 5,976 crores and 2,092 crores respectively.